you have a lot of high IQ people who become marginal members of society. And so what is the one psychological test that correlates with success in life? Well, when you look at children and you look at all the different theories about what makes successful kids, you realize that almost all the theories are wrong because they haven't been verified. Like for example, high IQ. You have a lot of high IQ people who become marginal members of society. And so what is the one psychological test that correlates with success in life? And I found out that it's the marshmallow test. It's the test that has survived every challenge. You track students for 30 years, for 30 years in different countries, and you find that they are more successful, they have a lower divorce rate, higher income, higher status in society. So what is this marshmallow test? You get kids and ask them, do you want a marshmallow now or two marshmallows a few hours from now? And the kids that want the marshmallow now tend to be those that want shortcuts, those that don't want to do the hard work. They want the, the, the quick kill. They grab that marshmallow. But the other ones say, no, wait a minute. If I wait two hours, I can get two marshmallows. I can hold out. There's a pot of gold waiting for me. They're not going to take the shortcut. And so you say to yourself, well, that's a test for kids. But then you track them decade by decade by decade. And then you find out, oh my God, these are the ones who go to college, the ones who hold out for that advanced degree that don't want that simple payoff now, but are going to delay gratification into the future. And so I realized that that's the key to success in life, not just science, but in life. Don't take the shortcuts. I realized that every time I was struggling with all these equations, there was that pot of gold out there. I wanted to understand Einstein. I wanted to understand the quantum theory. I wanted to be at the cutting edge of science, even if it meant that I had to, you know, not go play outside. I had to sit in my chair and simply crank out the math. You got to pay your dues. And I think, you know, when I think about Einstein, he spent the last 30 years of his life chasing after the theory of everything. He spent 10 years of his life chasing after what is what we now call relativity. When Einstein was 16 years old, 16 years old, he asked himself a simple question. Can you outrace a light beam? It took him 10 years to solve that problem. When he was 26 years old, he figured it all out. And that was relativity. And that changed the entire world. So talk about a marshmallow. Here's a man who said he's going to spend 10 years of his life answering a question, can you outrace a light beam? And the answer is no. The speed of light is the ultimate velocity in the universe. Einstein is the cop on the block. So here's a man who really held out for that marshmallow. We physicists are now probing the thought processes of the human brain. We want to know about what is mental illness. We want to know what is schizophrenia. Why does the brain go crazy? And what is the creative process? And what is intelligence? And what we find out is that when we compare ourselves to animals, we realize that our human brain really is different from the animals. First of all, we have alligators. Alligators understand space. Very good understanding of space. They find prey, they find mates. They know where they are in terms of space. Then you have monkeys, and then you have mice, and then you have dogs. They're social animals. They have not just spatial hierarchy, they have social hierarchy. They know who's the top dog. They know how to defer to other uh, members of the tribe. That's social consciousness. Then what do we have? If animals like alligators have spatial consciousness, if dogs have social consciousness, what kind of consciousness do we have? And I did some research on it. And I found out that what we have in the brain that is different from animals is we understand time. We understand the future. We constantly daydream, we scheme, we plot. We constantly think about what could be. Now let's do an experiment. Go home tonight and teach your dog the concept of tomorrow. Try it. Teach like your dog dogs. the concept of tomorrow, the next week, the next year, and you realize you can't. Animals live in the present. And that's what I think intelligence is. Intelligence is being able to map the future, simulate the future. So if you get an experiment of people with low IQ and high IQ, put them in the same room, and you give them the same job, 
rob a bank. You'll find out that the low IQ people probably do a much better job of robbing a bank, plotting the bank robbery, than high IQ people who get all messed up with legal implications and stuff like that. The point is that you can have some very smart robbers because they see the future. And that's what we humans do that animals cannot. We constantly daydream. We constantly create worlds that don't exist. Animals live in worlds that do exist, that is the present. They don't live in the past. They have almost no memory to speak of. Uh, animals have very little memory. They have some, but very minimal. We, on the other hand, we obsess with memory and we obsess with the future. And to me, that's what intelligence is. The ability to see the future, to simulate the future in complex, realistic ways. Well, you know, right now there's a national debate about jobs. National debate. People are hurting right now. And where do jobs come from? Where does prosperity come from? First of all, if you talk to a lawyer, a lawyer would say that prosperity and money come from lawsuits. You sue Peter to pay Paul. I'm a scientist. We say that wealth, all this wealth we see around us comes from science and technology. From the steam revolution, which gave us the industrial revolution and machines, to the electric revolution, which gave us dynamos and television, radio, to the high tech revolution of today, we've had three waves of wealth generation from science and physics and technologies. Now we're entering the fourth wave, artificial intelligence, biotech and nanotech. These are gonna be the drivers of wealth generation. So I tell young people, if you want a job in the future, go with the wave, the fourth wave beyond steam power, electricity and computers. The fourth wave is artificial intelligence, nanotech and biotech. That's where the jobs are gonna be. Well, my fundamental philosophy is, if it's not fun, don't do it. It's gotta be fun because ultimately that's what keeps you going. This is the problem that I can sink my teeth into. And I would rather work on one big problem and fail than work on lots of little problems and succeed. Some people ask me, well, what is the meaning of life then? And I say to myself that if somebody gives you from up high the meaning of life, it's too easy. I mean, is that all? Somebody gives you the meaning of life from, from, from the heavens? My attitude is that it's self-discovery. We have to reinvent ourselves. That the meaning of life is rediscovery. That we have to recreate ourselves rather than have it given to us from a celestial being in outer space.